Whoever's picking the colours on Audi's test cars at the moment is obviously into green because this is the second unusual green colour I've had in as many weeks. This is district green. It is a 1200-ish optional extra and quite a lot of this car is an optional extra but I'll get to that in due course. Welcome to the Audi Q5. This is a revised version of it for mid-2021 at this stage. And it's kind of competing with the BMW X3, bit of Volvo activity, but then you can also argue that something like the Volkswagen Tiguan Allspace is that expensive now that it's kind of into there as well. And it also looks a bit like a Porsche Macan, but it's a lot cheaper. So let's get started. Matrix headlights, there's like a two grand plus option, and then there's an in-betweeny option, which these ones are, but you get LEDs as standard. Even though this is an S-Line, you get two S-Line badges on it, but that's it, that's all you're getting. Nothing on the black grille, which now has black surrounds, same as on the back of the car, that's how you can tell it's an S-Line. Bit of fakeness going on here with vents and plastic and some ridges on the bonnet. We've got some optional 19 inch alloy wheels going on. They, they ride quite high, you know, there's a significant gap here. And even though they are 19s, trust me, they don't look 19 inch, sure they don't. We've got more of this black strip going on along the side skirts, black mirror housing and the sides of the windows. And then also across the roof rails that run up here, they're a nice black kind of matte finish to them. And we've got keyless grooves but not keyless as standard. But we will be able to keep our trousers clean by those covers on the doors. Really dark privacy glass. If you don't like people seeing your kids, you're embarrassed by them. And it all ends in a nice boot spoiler here, which is nicely broken up with these LED matrix lights on the back. And yes, there's some fake exhausts because, you know, that's the way the world has gone. I am glad to say there's an electric boot release on this. 550 litres is your standard boot. Obviously, you can raise down your seats. They have little handles to do that inside the car. You'll probably still have to go around the other side to tap it forward. Uh, we'll take a medium sized dog box with still space on the left. We've got a flexible parcel shelf that you can take out of the car, but there's nowhere to put it in the car. Tethering hooks are all over the place and the lip to get dogs and things in and out and boxes. It's there, but shouldn't wreck your head too much. Well, it's a good size boot. And you get the usual collection of Audi nets and things like that that you can keep things secure in. Definitely want that. That's the black strip I was talking about that now comes on the facelifted S-line version of the car. If it's an SE, it's going to be chrome. But you still get it though. The child locks on these doors can be operated on the driver's control panel, which makes it very easy to keep them in. Nice feature of the Q5. Armrest, yeah. No cup holders though. Yeah, no. And on some models, you can fully drop this down. And then if you need something longer from the boot, but still be able to carry two passengers, you can do it. I think I'd really sacrifice the cups for that. This model gets climate control on the back, independent climate control, but there's no USB for rear passengers. Audi, what are you doing? You want storage nests in the back? You have to pay extra for them. The rise cutouts for your knees and legroom is actually generous, apart from the middle passenger, because this is a ridiculously big hump in the middle of the floor. <laughs> Tons of legroom though. Same with the head height, even with the panoramic glass roof, which is a 2,000 euro plus optional extra. Oh, that's expensive. And I've locked myself in, but it is handy because I can just reach over here and unlock it. Ugh. Excuse me. See, told you it worked. Very, very handy. And the doors open reasonably wide. Not quite right angle to the car, but very acceptable. If you like knobs to change aircon and stuff like that, and premium quality finishes and fixtures and materials, then this is where the others just can't touch Audi. I say it in every Audi video I do, their interiors are absolutely amazing. USB-C options here, USB options in the front. There's still an old school 12 volt, if that is your thing. There's shortcut buttons to everything. And that seems to be a space Audi are sticking with, even in their e-tron GT. All the kind of real right on the edge cars, there's still a lot of physical buttons going on. Their nav and screens are very, very easy to use. Colourful, high res, 
I like the way it sits up, but it doesn't really protrude past your view of the windscreen. You have the S-line flat bottom steering wheel, adjustable, of course, with loads and loads of reach on that. Depending on how you like to sit, you'll get standard cruise control, but the radar one that will stop, start and keep up is an optional extra, as is Audi's virtual cockpit. I'm surprised to see needles in a car that costs around about 70,000 euro. However, I was pleasantly surprised to see a range of 1,200 kilometers when I jumped in from this diesel engine. And we'll cover that in a few minutes when we're on the drive. Astronic gearbox, I'm not quite sure what this is for because it's just too small for anything. Equally the shelf space here beside the USB, not really that usable for a phone. If you had wireless charging, it slides across here. The cup holders are generous, generously sized, as is the, the space down here for keys and things like that. And the armrest, fully slidable and adjustable for whatever way you want it to be. So yeah, main criticism, needles. What? I paid how much? But everything else, typically Audi, typically gorgeous. So we got some diesels. There is a diesel with just over 200 brake horsepower. There is also a 163 brake horsepower diesel engine. There's plug-in hybrid petrols. You can get an SQ5. This S-Line diesel version starts at about 60,000 euro. So they're all automatic, no matter what you go for. At least that's something. So while it never feels particularly quick, it has enough for the everyday overtaking maneuvers that life throws at you and it's pretty quiet and really solid on the road you feel like you're in something that's really really well well built and despite it being on 19 inch alloys and s-line trim i'm happy enough with the ride quality of the car as well even over bumps on typical irish back roads which is kind of what I'm on now, it's, it's quite acceptable. The three zone climate control is handy, particularly if you've got people in the back who are too cold, too hot, and people at the front are different. The glass roof, I mean, it is gorgeous. It's 2,300 euro, which is an awful lot. If you like driving aids like speed sign recognition, that's a 300 euro optional extra. There's no blind spot in this car. So the safety gadgets, and if you really want to spec this as, as I have done, with just a few options there on screen, you're very quickly into a 70,000 euro car and it still won't have some, some basic things for that price. It's just very, very expensive. I don't mean for what it is, because it is a nice car, but man, it's dear. It manages to handle the power well, though. I don't really feel it ever tugging away at the steering, fighting for your attention or anything like that. So it's uh, well set up in that way. Steering's all right, nothing major to report home about. It's fine, not the sportiest feedback of steering that I've ever experienced in an Audi. All those things I'd argue are kind of irrelevant to someone who's just after a well-built SUV with an Audi badge in the front. And for a lot of people who are buying this particular version of the car, that's, that's more important. One big question I have is, would you be brave enough to go for a more unusual colour like this? Let's not say it's a, a 1200 plus optional extra. Let's, let's say it was, you know, 200 or maybe even free. Would you go for something that's a bit unusual? Peugeot, for example, are doing the brighter colours in the model range at no extra cost. And if you want something like black, it does cost extra. And they're trying to just get people to be a bit brave with their colours. And I think this looks pretty cool. There's a bit of an army vibe going off it, but it's not as it's not as dull as an army green, like a vehicle you might see in the road. There is a metallic in it, so um, but it's a it's a kind of decent enough comparison. Fuel consumption in this model seems to be about eight liters per 100 kilometers. I haven't really had it on any sort of long stretches, so I'm not doing it proper justice. You will get that down to somewhere around late sixes on a longer journey where you're kind of cruising at a decent motorway speed. For me, it just keeps coming back to the price, and the bog standard SE car is 59,000 euro, which is a lot of money. All that said, you'll be cruising around in a really good looking, well built, solid, you know, really solid, well insulated, comfortable 
SUV. And if they are the things that you want, with the looks of the S line if you want to stretch to it, then the Q5 is an interesting one that should be on your shortlist. The Audi Q5 is a really capable, good-looking, family SUV. The main issue with it is the price. And Audi are getting themselves into a different space of pricing for a car this size because take the Kia Sorento for example you mightn't think twice about spending that kind of money on an Audi and you might say oh it's a lot of money for a Kia but the Kia is cheaper bigger and do everything this car can do it just doesn't quite have an Audi badge in the front so it's not the cars like this from Volvo and Audi aren't very very good they are it's just the cheaper models with less clout have gotten better that said, if you're set on an Audi badge and an Audi Q5 and all the build quality and prestige that goes with it, then you won't do wrong with one of these. Thanks for watching.